fans so of make down here. This video is going to be about the pharmacological differences between amphetamine and methamphetamine. Um, <clears throat> the pharmacological differences are that um, amphetamine, which is commonly known as B or Adderall, or depending on context, is a molecule that boosts levels of norepinephrine and uh, dopamine to enhance energy, focus, concentration, and in some people can be relaxing in low doses but in most people tend to be energetic in higher doses it could produce energy in the vast majority of people it, it can increase the attention span for all these and accelerate thinking processes but for all these positive benefits there are also some side effects such as in higher doses <coughs> and it tends to um, produce side effects and you will like you risk glut glutamate excitotoxicity if it is taken in high doses to prevent <coughs> but in low doses and especially in ADHD it tends long term use tends to correct brain deficiencies while in neurotypicals even though it may enhance neurotypical brains to a certain extent it does not do so in the same way that it does it in the ADHD brain mainly because the brains are wired differently in neurotypicals <coughs> it will tend to raise the levels a bit too high especially if taken in higher doses while in lower doses it might be safe but there's always that risk of glutamate excitotoxicity. The good thing though is that amphetamine is not directly neurotoxic. It's, um, and any side effects can be countered and glutamate excitotoxicity can be prevented by stacking it with lemon tea. Now the main differences are that <coughs> Little tweaks in structure can make for huge differences. <coughs> for example, adding a uh, one methyl group at the nitrogen atom will <coughs> result in the that environment, which is highly dangerous. Mostly due to the fact that it tends to produce way more neurotransmitters but the other difference is that while amphetamine does not release serotonin meth does release serotonin and the serotonin, norepinephrine and dopamine especially the huger spikes of dopamine and serotonin you run the risk of serotonin syndrome uh, burning out the neurons you run a whole other, lots of other risks, <coughs> and and is directly neurotoxic, and there's a much much higher chance of glutamate excitotoxicity, much less benefits, much less therapeutic benefits, much more damage side effects. Hence, that methyl group is not worth it. However, another methyl group will turn into an ethyl amphetamine, which is 
since this asshole it's then it starts to go into this ink zone again. However it um all of these <coughs> the safest tends to be when you back up with memory. Now there have been remodifications on this molecule. <coughs> so you got something relatively unheard of and new like with far fewer side effects called uh, two phenyl three amino butane which has far fewer side effects and again stacking things with lemon tea drastically reduces any residual side effects that may occur <coughs> and in general <coughs> stacking any or almost any stimulant with like memantine can help protect neurons and prevent glutamate excitotoxicity so and can help prevent tolerance because stimulants certain stimulants tend to build tolerance rapidly <coughs> now I don't want to go too much into modafinil because modafinil is in its own different class entirely it's not a stimulant modafinil is a weight force enhancer so it works differently it doesn't give you energy it gives you weight force stimulants on the other hand doesn't give you wakefulness but it gives you energy so both of these like Adderall and Modafinil work by completely different mechanisms of action pretty much but again ideally any anything like wakefulness enhancers or stimulants or even caffeine would be ideal to be stacked with memantine because memantine has this neuroprotective effect and so and uh, uh, not all cases are like the same sometimes you you might not even need these things sometimes you might need the opposite like things to quiet down the neurons maybe a, a haloperidol or a Seroquel or something, but I'm, I'm getting off topic. The, the main thing is that <coughs> math and speed are totally different pharmacologically. Hence, one is like half safe, half dangerous, like it's in the gray area, and another is totally completely dangerous. However, the and for me, it could be made much safer when stacked with memantine. Memantine is the key here. Now, there are much better ways to enhance cognition if that is the goal. If the goal is just energy, then yeah, you got stimulants. But if the goal is the actual enhancements of cognition, you have things like NSI 189. Uh, Selegiline, lion's mane mushrooms, uh, omega 3s, and dynamic VC, and other stuff. And felt Um Future analogs will be made with the pure side effects. Science has not gotten there yet. We just have to wait and see. If, 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 It can make you happy, suppress your appetite, reduce fatigue, increase your attention span, and is used to treat narcolepsy, depression, and ADHD. What magical substance does all this? Adderall. Today, amphetamine is used in low doses primarily to treat... Wait, what? Oh, right. Used to treat ADHD. The majority of ADHD drugs stimulate the central nervous system. You'd think it wouldn't make sense to treat hyperactivity and lack of focus by adding stimulation, but we'll let neuroscience expert Dr. Ryan Davison explain. 
People with ADHD tend to have lower levels of dopamine, a key chemical in the brain's reward center. This lack of dopamine means people with ADHD are constantly seeking stimulation. Amphetamines stimulate the release of dopamine and other neurotransmitters in the brain, so those minor distractions don't cause you to lose focus. Nerve cells and neurotransmitters act like they're at a middle school dance. Neurotransmitters like dopamine are on one side of the gym and receptor cells sit on the other. Amphetamine starts the party by pushing dopamine out into the dance floor, where they then partner up with the receptors. Amphetamine also keeps dopamine on the dance floor, leaving more for the receptors to catch. Here's Dr. Davison with another fun fact that shows why little tweaks in structure can make for big changes. Here's what a molecule of amphetamine looks like. This little guy is a group of a carbon and three hydrogen atoms, also called a methyl group. If you add one more methyl group onto the end of an amphetamine molecule, it turns into its much more dangerous cousin, methamphetamine. These four little atoms can turn you from a studious citizen into a total 